Hi, I'm Marty Nimco. Many private practitioners' caseloads have lightened because of the coronavirus pandemic. But if your decline is large, or if your practice wasn't full before the pandemic, the virus could have a silver lining for you. Maybe it's a wake-up call to take a hard look at why your practice has declined or is not doing well. Are you not sufficiently effective or likable? And or is it a marketing problem? Let's start by looking inward. You need to introspect from start to finish. First, do you make the most of a prospect's first contact? Do you start by asking the client to describe the situation? Then, if you think you can help, do you concisely outline the likely process and its length and price, and then ask if the client would like to set an appointment? Is your fee right? Of course, that'll vary with your locale and your effectiveness. It may be helpful to know what I charge. It's 175 an hour with no sliding scale. If the client's initial query suggests inability to pay, if I feel like it can be helpful, I'll offer the first session pro bono, and at the end of the session, reassess if I want to offer another free session, one at a reduced rate, or charge full fare. That avoids clients who don't need a sliding scale, but figure they should try to get me as cheaply as possible. Whether digitally or in person, do you create a welcoming atmosphere, a pleasant office, your tone of voice, a bit of small talk? Do you listen more than talk, yet offer enough valuable questioning and tactful smart input session after session, and collaboratively develop homework assignments so that the client leaves each session feeling he or she has gotten sufficient value for the money? Do you make it easy for the client to schedule the next appointment? For example, at the end of a session, I might say something like, we're off to a good start. Should we figure out a next time to get together? The, uh, and finally, do you follow up with past clients to ask how they're doing and what they found most and least helpful in your work together? In doing that, you're not only being a caring person, but you're also marketing. It keeps you top of mind for additional appointments or for referring you to other people. But don't ask for referrals or whether she'd like another appointment. That's transparently marketing, which can be a turnoff. I might word it as something like, you popped into my head and I was wondering how you're doing, and so I thought I'd check in. Now let's turn to marketing. Unless you have few satisfied clients, the most potent way to get more clients is the aforementioned, contacting past clients to see how they're doing and to get feedback. Do you offer free samples? As Costco gives bites to get you to buy pounds, do you give talks offering valuable tips, describing what you do and demonstrating with role play? In this time of coronavirus, you might try doing that remotely, for example, with few minute YouTube videos. There's no need for fancy equipment. Just as I have here, just set up your computer's webcam so your head and shoulders fills most of the frame and that there are no shadows on your face. And finally, because of major metropolitan areas ever-growing traffic and parking problems, especially now in the time of coronavirus, you're going to want, if true, to tout that you work effectively by phone or video. As bad as the coronavirus pandemic is, it does have silver linings. It just might improve your private practice's quality and quantity. Anyway, I thank you for watching. I'm Marty Nemco. I welcome your thumbs up and accept your thumbs down. I always look forward to your comments, and I love it if you hit the share button below and share on your social media so that my efforts have broader impact. And I'm always flattered if you choose to subscribe to my channel. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I am Marty Nemco.